Hello again and welcome. Today I'd like to talk about some of the lower cost meters that I've looked at. So all three of these meters have a few things in common. First, they were some of the very first meters that I looked at when I first began transient testing the meters. To the right we have the Ampro Bay M510. This meter was actually the runner-up to the Fluke 101. I ended up using the limit where this meter was damaged for the baseline for all of my testing. The one on the left, this is the UT90A, this meter's been damaged several times. And then in the front we have the Maztec, this one sold under the Centec brand by Harbor Freight. It's a part number P98674. So another thing that all three of these meters have in common is they all use potentiometers. Basically when you're looking at a new meter, like this Bryman BM869S, this uses closed case alignment. So essentially what you do is you walk through some menus and you inject a signal of a known value and the meter stores those into a table. The older meters like these, you do the same thing that you hook up your test signal, but then there are several adjustments that you have to make to bring these back into alignment. This particular Maztec meter I believe has 11 potentiometers in it. One of the concerns I see people posting is you have a meter like this and it's riding around in your toolbox or the glove compartment of your car or say you drop it, that you can actually knock those potentiometers out of alignment. So we're going to run a test today. So rather than to drop test a bunch of these meters and try to see how much it knocks them out of alignment, I thought what we could do is take some of the potentiometers out of various meters that I'd scrapped. So you can see on this piece of perfboard, I have six smaller potentiometers. There's a larger one. This is what I used to replace the one in the Unity UT61E. The three colored ones on the lower right, these are capacitors. So after I soldered these down, I basically set the pots to their center position, and then I went ahead and measured them. So what I'm going to do is measure these again using the same meter, and let's just see how much these have drifted. So let's start with our first potentiometer. You can see it reads 498.43. Previously, this measured 500.08. The next one measures 998.0 ohms. Previously, it measured 999.2. The next one reads 1.0050K. Previously, it read 1.0080K. The next one reads 5.2791K. Previously, it measured 5.2791K. 248k. The next one reads 239.43k. Previously I measured 237.57k. The next one reads 5.059k and previously it read 5.054k. And our last one looks like it measures 460.19 ohms versus 460.01 ohms. So what we'll do next is mount this up to our vibration table. So if you're interested in knowing more about this vibration table, I'll post a link in the description to the very first video where I use this. I wanted to run this in the vertical axis as well, so all I've done is I've mounted three standoffs and I've hot glued them to the back side of this perf board. So I wanted to run it in the vertical axis as well. Alright, so our test board has been running for the better part of a day. Let's go ahead and we'll pull it off. You can see how I attach the standoffs. I mean, I'm putting a fair amount of stress on that. Very little give. All right, let's go ahead. We'll remeasure all of our pots. As you can see, 498.54. The next one is 997.9 ohms. The next one is 1.0064. The next one is 5.2699. Next, we have 238.60. Next, we have 5.0590. And the last one is 460.24. See, our first one is 498.43 versus 498.34. Then 998.0 versus 
and then 1.0050 versus 1.0064 this one starts to get a little wonky you can see it's 5.2791k versus 5.2699k let's see so 239.43 versus 238.6 5.0591k versus 5.0590 pretty much again dead on and the last one is 460.19 versus 460.24 so all of them are fairly close a couple of things I should mention these potentiometers again came off of various meters that I damaged these meters probably all went through some kind of a drop test but besides that there wasn't any kind of extended vibration testing done on them Probably the only time these pots were adjusted outside of the factory was when I sent them to their center position to run this test. So I can tell you that these potentiometers that I removed off of some of the meters that I damaged don't appear to be as susceptible to vibration sensitivity as what some people let on. Of course they did move but you need to consider too that the meters that are using these potentiometers aren't typically like this Bryman. This being a 50,000 count meter where normally I'll find these on like a two to six thousand count meter. Of course one of the common meters that people talk about changing the potentiometer is this UT61E. At the start of this video I had mentioned that I had replaced the pot in this particular one. Of course this meter has been heavily modified. I'm using this same Borns pot but to be clear I didn't change this pot out because I was concerned about vibration. This meter has the highest temperature drift out of all the ones that I had looked at and I was trying to find a way to calm that down. Of course the first thing I was concerned about was the temperature drift of the pot that they had used so I decided to put in a better quality part and indeed it didn't make any difference but I left that pot in there and so that's what this thing has. However I have been keeping records for this meter. I post this from time to time. You can see I started collecting the data on 1121 of 16 and the last time I looked at it was 331.19 but you can see for yourself that basically it's not really drifted a whole lot. There is a possible reason why some of the potentiometers could be more susceptible to vibration than others and I hate to say it but it's possible that it could be caused by the user. I'll see people posting about how their two meters don't match right down to the last digit and so they're trying to use their 9 volt batteries to align their meters and you could just imagine them sitting in there with their screwdriver and trying to tweak these things. You know these are fairly fragile and I could imagine that if you do this enough you're going to damage the pots. Of course that screwdriver you can see this one's fairly small but you get an idea how large this is compared to the potentiometer's head. Normally what you're going to use is a diddle stick, something like this one. This one's actually made by Borns, I believe. And you can see the metal blade on this is just the right size to fit down inside of one of these pots. Of course you don't want to put any downward force on these. You just want to lay it in there and do your adjustment. But I could imagine if you're not using the correct tool for this and you're continuously fiddling with these it's possible that you've loosened them up and you know over time now with just some basic vibration that the parts will start to drift. Again the meter that I use out in the trailer for my motorcycle work that uses potentiometers and that meter sits in the trailer 24 7 through the heat through the cold in the winter I'm sure it sees a fair amount of vibration and I would bet that if I took that meter out of the trailer right now it would still be within the manufacturer's specifications. Hopefully this video will help some of you that are overly concerned about the mechanical potentiometers in your meters being sensitive to vibration. Again, it's just not what I've seen and it's not really what this test is showing. But if you are really concerned about it, I suggest you get a better meter, something like this BM869S. Again, a lot of the newer ones just don't have potentiometers in them. Well, all for now. Till the next video. Later.